Yeah, live. Yes, we are live. Can uh, can everyone? Wait a minute. Let me get this camera in focus. Can everyone hear me? Because I'm using a microphone, and I'm not sure if it works on this phone. Hello. Where's the, how do I get the chatter? Top chat. There we go. One minute. One minute. Ah, modern technology. It works. Anyway, I'm here at the uh, Cambridge Centre for Computing History and I am at their retro weekend, which is filled with delight and wonder. It's basically a weekend where people bring in their machines, their rare machines, and demonstrate them at the museum, which is already filled with crap loads of rare machines. So it's a good place to be. It's a very good place to be. Anyway, I will turn the camera around and then you can see some delights. Laggy. Lag. So much lag. There we go. Oh, my thumb's... No, my thumb is fine. Uh, yeah, you have to apologise. I have to apologise for my phone because I'm using a Samsung Note 3 from, what, 2011, because I'm too tight to upgrade. Anyway, anyway, here the stream is lagging hard. Oh, that's not good. How much lag are you experiencing? Are you experiencing 60% lag, 70% lag? Anyway, a lot of lag. Okay, well, I'll carry on and I'll see how we get on. I'll see how we get on. So, look, here's some of the machines which... 15 frames per second. Good God. Here's some of the machines which have been brought in. We've got a Atari Mega ST there. Very nice, running the normal desktop. We've got an Atari PC here, which is always nice. You know, Atari did quite a few PCs, IBM PC compatibles. Uh, we've got a Pied Piper Communicator 1 over here, one of the less famous machines of the 80s. And a ZX81, look at that case. Look at that. That is a custom-made case for a ZX81. Got Executel over here, which is, I think Techmoan recently did a video on this, basically like uh, a, a kind of video foam organizer all in one with a built-in screen. That is a thing of absolute delight. There was a Commodore 65 here earlier, but the chap who owns it, it seems to have vanished, probably to make sure I don't try and steal his Commodore 65. Over here we've got, look at this, look at this, Colour Genie running Genie Invader, with some other pictures of a your, Sing your Computer magazine next to it. This is a small Sanyo personal computer, which looks bloody delightful. Over here we've got a Multitech MPF2 keyboard. Look at that. Look at that thing. Micro Professor. Which is astonishing. Dragon 64, which is running some sort of Telstar service. Texas Instruments TI 994A. Yeah, apologies for the slideshow. It's a combination of having a crap phone and bad network. Look at this thing. This is a sharp personal computer with built-in tape deck. I love the keys on this. Look at this. Let me see if I can get it in focus. Look at that. Look at that thing. It's got scramble running on it, but that is a thing of contained beauty. A few machines over here. Philips VG5000 in various forms. Ah, the old classic, Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Another Sinclair in a custom case with a, look at that TV. Look at the controls on the top, that is nice. Got an SX64, one of Commodore's machines, one of their portable, or so-called portable machines. We've got a plotter over here in use. Wow. Wired up to a uh, Microvax which is plotting a picture of the, uh, the shuttle. I haven't seen a plotter in years. 
pretty impressive. Over here we've got all the, uh, the normal stuff, normal things in the museum, normal exhibitions which are here day in, day out. Yeah, it's quite choppy, apologies for that. I'm not sure why it's so choppy, I think it's my phone. Over here is their new display, which is about the Lions computer, which is essentially the first business computer, which they have received quite a lot of funding recently to make an exhibition about, which looks pretty interesting. Possibly a video in there, I reckon. Uh, what do we have over here? We've got an Osborne computer, a PDP next to it, with an empty tin of hero heroes. Disappointing various pieces of technology, floppy disks, and so forth. A Dragon 200, which was, what, the Spanish version of the Dragon 32? Tarby 1200XL. Various boxes. Sinclair ZX81. Oh, and the Commodore Max, which was, what, the Japanese version of the Commodore 16, wasn't it? Look at that. Commodore model 3032. Few machines here. What's this? X K K Bop EM. K Bop EM. So many machines. Radio Shack TRS Color Computer 2 over there. Few machines which are in operation here. What do we have? We've got the uh, Sega SG1000. Connected up to a Sega Mark III. <laughs> FM Towns here, which is running F29 Retaliator and running it pretty well. Look at that. Look at those look at that polygons on that bloke. Look at that explosion effect. It's the best effect I've ever seen in my life. We've got uh, the bloke who owns it. He runs the YouTube channel Reinfused there. And Octavius. And over here we have Quang lurking, spelt with a K. <laughs> and these are Quang's machines. What's your favourite machine, Quang? My favourite machine. Out of the ones you brought. Out of the ones I brought. Uh, it would have to be the Dick Smith Wizard. Ah, uh, yes, the Dick Smith Wizard. Here it is. Which is a. This was the predecessor to the Socrates, wasn't it? Yes, the VTEC Creative So here's the Socrates, the VTEC Socrates, which is a thing of beauty. And this was run by. This was a machine which is branded by a chap called Dick Smith, who was. Dick Smith was um, an uh, electronics guy in Australia. There you go. An electronics guy in Australia. He's like. He's, like the Australian um, uh, Alan Sugar, really. Just took stuff and rebranded it. The Australian Alan Sugar. This is his machine. What a thing of perpetual beauty. If we go over here, we've got a uh, monitor which continually runs adverts from the 80s, which is just a staggering thing of magnificence. I could stand here and watch that all day, but I'm not going to, because someone said they want to see some more Atari PCs. These are the same ones we saw originally, but they are quite beautiful. Look at that keyboard. You can see it's got the Atari slanty kind of styling going on, but also very much a PC keyboard. Next to that is the Mega ST keyboard, which, you know, looks very much like an ST keyboard. So nice, so many nice things. Over here we have the normal row of machines. I did a live stream on this, what, last year, the year before? So you might have seen all these machines already. I will walk slowly past them because the frames per second is pretty slow. I guess that's what I get for running Dropbox on my phone at the same time. Nice MSX at the end. Look at that. Let's get a nice shot down there. Look at those machines all lined up. Yes. FPS is watchable. That is good to hear. Let's go and have a look at some of the normal machines they have lying about. So we've got the Amiga 1200, which is pretty standard. 
Next to that, we have a Sinclair QL, one of Sinclair's less successful machines, but still a thing of styled beauty. Contains a Motorola 68008, which uh, wasn't quite 16 bit, it had an 8 bit bus. But um, it's a shame. It might have succeeded better if it had a full 16 bit processor. We've got a nice line of big tracks there. Can never be without too many big tracks. Around here we have a Sinclair PC200, which was uh, Sinclair's version after Amstrad bought them of the uh, basic IBM PC compatible. It's a 086, I believe. Atari ST FM next to that, which is always a delight. Next to that, we've got an Acorn A3010 running um, Pac-Man 3D, which actually runs it pretty well. See, that is, you know, Acorns with their RISC architecture, they are a nice machine and massively underrated at the time, in my opinion, at least. All right, let's go round the back here. Why not? Round here is another exhibition. We've got the ET, the extraterrestrial exhibition going on here, depicting all the games which were dumped in the desert. We've got some machines. We've got, oh, that's one of those newer machines, isn't it? We've got Centipede over here. Space Invaders next to it with the original mirrored screen, which is always nice. Various consoles around here. Yeah, that was Street Fighter 2. Um, yeah, Champion Edition. The video's frame rate is from the 80s. Yes, it is. As is the, no, the Amstrad GX4, thousand was from 1990 wasn't it I believe running the game that everyone knows from it burning rubber one of the best games for the console and the pack-in title uh, what do we have around here we've got some more machines we've got the 8-bit era we've got a master system an NES we've got a ColecoVision, and a Television, an Atari VCS, and a Binatone Pong machine. Next to an Atari Pong machine, no less. I'm getting motion sickness. I do apologize, Mr. Schwarzenegger. Over here we've got an Apple iMac, Apple III, nice. And then around here we have some com com comptometers and calculators. Next to the 70s office, which is always here. Still pouring out some TV from the 70s. TV from the 70s never ends. And neither does coffee from the 70s, even though the cup is empty, which is unfortunate. Anyway, if we go over here, past all the, the exhibition and oh, look at this I forgot about these machines look at this look at this grid case plus look at that that screen is, I'm just gonna sit and watch this screen for a while look at that that is magnificent look at the definition on this Heathkit H19 it doesn't really trans translate well to phone but that is so well defined. Next to it, we've got um, some other kind of Heath kit. Computing at a blistering rate. Altair, which is operating and connected to this um, terminal here. which actually this is this is, acts as the display essentially for the Altair as it prints out what is going on. Mine Snake running on the Sharp MZ-80A. 
you, can you get Willy Wonka tickets? No, but you can pay an entrance fee and get in for the mere cost of seven pounds. Or something like that, anyway. Look at that. That's like some sort of swooping ski slope or something. We've got a uh, Pencil 2 with SD Basic over here. And over here, they want help restoring a Whitechapel MG1. Do you know these systems? Does anyone on this stream know this system? Because frankly, it's a thing of absolute beauty. Look at that thing. What have we got? We've got, we've got a switch for basic there. You can switch between basic and APL. Wow, that is nice. What about the keyboard? Oh, that's, that's some nice clicking action. Nice clicking action on that keyboard. Uh, we've got some serious machines here. Act serious machines who um, didn't act, did the act have a hand in making the apricots? I saw someone mentioning apricot machines. There's not many apricot machines here, to be honest. This is a different room with various BBC micros running, various projects going on. And through here we have the entrance where we can rejoin the main. Excuse me. <laughs> and we're back to the main room. Uh, if you ever get a chance to come down to Cambridge, I would definitely re recommend coming to the Centre for Computing History because although it doesn't always have all these machines in the middle, you know, you've still got all these machines around the outside and there's normally quite a lot going on. Um, they've got this event on tomorrow as well. So if you're about tomorrow, then I believe they're open from 10 onwards maybe worth popping down to check out all these delights. Again, apologies for the lack of frame rate on the phone. I will upgrade my phone at some point, but probably not for another five years. we go that is the center for computing history in cambridge and this is their retro weekend which is nice it's definitely worth checking out am i using a motorola razor no unfortunately not this is a samsung note 3 which um you know does the job i don't see any point in upgrading speak to octavius okay i'll go and speak to octavius Wait a second. Someone has asked me to speak to you. Say hello. hello. Hi, look what I've got. I've got one. That's my missile. Oh, Fuck sake. Right. I have to deal with this. Right, I need to go and deal with Octavius nicking my missile command 3D. But um, thanks for tuning in to this live stream, impromptu live stream of this sensational exhibition. And um, I'll see you soon. Also, whoever donated two pounds, thanks very much because I didn't catch your name at the time. So I'm gonna have to go back through the comments, find out who you are and thank you personally using some sort of gift card or whatever however people thank each other these days right enjoy your evening and uh, I'll see you soon bye bye